What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. Yeah, so I set it to, I go to bed at like 1030 now. So it's close enough, I guess. And I wake up at 635. So on a weekend, sometimes if I got to really work hard on a weekend where I work later, I will literally take an air mattress into this room right here because this is blacked out mm. and still wear the eye mask and have no light exposure. Like if I go to bed at mm. 1230 or one or something like that. And that makes a difference mm. too. Like, like at least getting some of the things right whenever you can, if your schedule has to change better than nothing. And, and the topic of the eye mask keeps coming up and that's because we want our we want to be completely blacked out at night because that's how we produce melatonin. And melatonin mm. is that hormone that's responsible for our sleepiness hormone, right? Melatonin puts us to sleep. Okay, so we okay. need it, right? A lot of people are having exogenous melatonin. So they're going out and they're supplementing with it. And I don't recommend that just because it's a hormone. As soon as your, your eyes are completely blacked out, there's no light coming into your retina, it turns off the signals and it tells your brain, all right, it's time to sleep. Yes, it does. Yeah. I believe that. And the great thing about the eye mask is because, A, you black out everything, but, B, if you don't have blackout curtains, anything can happen in the outside. Like we live in New York. I live right in the city. Yeah. Like I've got lights everywhere. People are still letting off like uh, July 4th fireworks i'm like what i'm like what i like i walked outside i had a fireworks show That's on my what balcony we do in america yeah i reckon yes. so it's like and they're doing it at 1 a.m it woke me up so apart from the sound but like you can be woken up at night mm -hmm. due to the light so that's why we do the eye mask that's part of our protocol as well for enhancing sleep performance now what about like when i gotta get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night though and terrible I have to turn, it's terrible yeah yeah, I usually I've I've found a way. Like usually, I I make it there in the dark and nothing bad happens. But sometimes, like when I when I wake up and I'm like a little disoriented, I have to turn on the light real quick. And oh, I'm like, did course. I just ruin everything? But see, see how you just said that. I would question why are you even waking up at night. I would I look mean, at your I drink 150 ounces yes, of water a day. I understand that. Maybe it's cutting back, you know, an hour before you go to bed. Maybe we do a. But see, you say that. But I investigate more. Okay. You're very young. Yeah. yeah. You're you're very young, but I would investigate more. Could it be a prostate problem? Like this is a, a phenomenon that happens in most men um, over the age of like 60. They tend to wake up at 4 a.m. and go to the bathroom. Yeah. We could completely dehydrate them and figure out what it, what it is. Is it a habit of yours that we need to break? Because you don't want sleep disruptions during the night. You want beautiful sleep, long sleep cycles. So never get up to go to the bathroom. No, I don't. I don't. Move. I mean, I've always had the world's worst bladder. There's also like some family history with that. Like that's there a you thing, go. right? So I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna stop that. You yeah. know what I mean? You can. I can. But we won't do it on today's. It involves. All right. What would go? What would go into if if you were investigating? Do you have an example of without naming a name, obviously, or pointing out who it is? Do you have an example of a client where they had an issue like that, and you investigated and you found something? that then you were able to fix? No, well, I would understand. I would look at um, vasopressin, for example. I would, First of all, I would eliminate things. I would say to you just for the next two, three nights, try not to drink water for, you know, three hours prior to going to sleep or two hours prior to go to sleep just so we can see if it's a, if it's you just being overhydrated or mm. if it's just a habit of yours or getting up or if you really need to go to the bathroom. Then we'll work our way up from there. Again, it's all done from blood work. We can even look at your hydration status. You may think you're hydrated, but maybe you're not. How would that work? Well, you're drinking a lot of water, which is great, but do we have an electrolyte imbalance because you're drinking too much water? Interesting. Yeah. So but even like at the rate, so when I wake up in the morning, yeah. I have a very clear routine that gets yeah. done in a period of time, the same every day, like clockwork. And one of it is I drink probably like 60 to 70 ounces of water. And then that just... What's that in liters? This thing right here, I'm drinking it to there. It's filled to there and it's, and it's down here. When Where I'm do you done. get that water from? It's through a, it's through a uh, fil filtration okay, system. Okay, great. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'm not drinking the Hoboken water. I mean, you know, we're pretty close to Bayonne here. 
I don't know not what the means, not but... the cleanest water yeah. around here. Hey guys, if you have a second, please be sure to share this episode around on social media and with your friends, whether it's Reddit, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, doesn't matter. It's all a huge help. It gets new eyeballs on the show and it allows us to grow and survive. So thank you to all of you who have already been doing that and thank you to all of you who are going to do so now. Uh, but look, it's it's all about managing, you know, we we want to know, we want to put you in the best position to sleep. This one always like surprises people when I say that you have to be healthy to sleep. You have to be healthy to exercise. What? Yeah. So if you're not healthy, and when I say not healthy, I mean you could have, you know, we see in, in people with mild depression that they have problems sleeping, okay? We know that things that kick you out of sleep, such as deep sleep and REM sleep, are uh, medications. Serotonin is, is involved, you know, the, the happiness neurotransmitter. Yeah. That's involved in actually keeping you asleep. Yeah, so we've got a play between serotonin and melatonin that helps you fall asleep and stay asleep. So if you are mildly depressed, quote, unquote, I'm not saying that they, these people are unhealthy, but let's just say you're not at the complete health status. That could disrupt sleep. Have you had any alcohol? Have you got any disruptions um, in other different biomarkers that could kick you out of deep sleep and REM sleep? Uh, I've had a patient who had um, a DHEA deficiency, so she was low, mm. right? And so we supplemented her with DHEA, and because of that, it completely dropped her REM sleep. And then I then found a really great human randomized control trial that shows that there is a correlation between REM sleep and DHEA. Mm. DHEA is a, they call it the youth, the hormone of youth. It's a precursor. So it's needed to make testosterone and to make estrogen. So it's needed there to make these two molecules. So there's so many. So when I say you have to be healthy to sleep, I mean, you, anyone, you can pass out right now. Let's just say we give you marijuana and alcohol and it just you just pass out. You just sedate yourself. Some people are just doing that at night. They're just sedating themselves. They think that they're sleeping, but they're but not. Then, yeah. Oh, Louisa, but red wine puts me to sleep. No, you're sedating yourself. You're not getting into deep sleep and REM sleep. I don't care if you're knocked out. I don't care if you sleep at 1 a.m. and you woke up at 10. That's not high performing. So you have to be healthy to sleep. Yeah, maybe we should stay with that for a second, the mm -hmm. effect of alcohol and weed on the brain. I know you have a lot of a lot <laughs> of a lot of thoughts on that. So let's start with alcohol. Mm. Is there a way to have alcohol in some moderation that doesn't have poor effects on the brain? Yes, and that comes down to having at minimum at maximum two drinks a week. Yeah. Right. I always say that every drop of alcohol is doing damage to your brain yeah. for many different reasons, Makes right? Sense. But if you have one glass a week, will it be detrimental to your overall health and well-being? Probably not. It, it, what we see is that you start to get more of a detriment to the, the gray matter of the brain, that's the cell body, and the white matter, which is the axon that I mentioned earlier. You've got gray matter, you've got white matter of the brain. The white matter is where all of our myelinated neurons are. We tend to see problems there when you're drinking, when a female is drinking around four to six drinks a week, mm. a male about 12. And what about weed or THC, I guess, to be more Absolutely specific? Absolutely terrible. And what does it do? It, well, it, it does not allow you to, it blocks REM sleep, it blocks deep sleep, but not just that, you have that added component of inducing psychotic episodes, yeah, with long-term use. So you're, you're deteriorating different parts of your brain, especially the, the learning centers, the memory centers of the brain. I don't understand people who, I, I always tell people, I don't know who needs to hear this, but marijuana isn't helping you sleep. Are there other ways, you know, because everyone has CBD gummies and stuff like that Completely now. different to completely THC. Completely different. Well, not completely. They come from the same plant, but they're the non-psychoactive component right. of the plant. Right. So yeah. it's not firing at the brain in the same way at all. No. Okay. Because it makes sense, by the way, when you say don't use that to sleep because you're it's it's essentially just blocking you into thinking you're sleepy. Exactly. And 
it's sedating you. I yeah. keep saying the word sedate because it's like if you go into surgery, which is one thing that I do. I, I go into- Oh, you're a surgeon I, too? I, I <laughs> no, a neurophysiologist intraoperatively goes in and does all of the brain, um, the, the basically the electromyography during surgery, right? The electromyography. During surgery, That's yeah. That's a big word, electromyography. Well, it's a very normal word for me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to go and have, um, you know, uh, a tumor cut out, mm. let's just, let's never say that you, you have to do that. During that, we can predict um, if you're going to have a stroke on the table during that time. And that's what an intraoperative neurophysiologist will detect. An intraoperative ne yeah. So that's you? Yes, Correct. So you work hand in hand with the doctor on something with like that? With the neurosurgeon, yeah. And, you know, he will wow. um, say, is this patient about to have a stroke? Um, how, you know, can we get some eye movement? Can, you know, this person during surgery, like move their feet, et cetera. The reason I brought that up is because when you go into surgery, you have something called propovol, for example, to sedate you. So we're not, mm -hmm. you're not going into deep sleep. Right? We're, we're just sedating you, knocking yeah. you out. Yeah, yeah. That's actually to a lower extent what alcohol is doing. Mm. Alcohol is a sedative. Ethanol is a sedative. Not just that, when it's broken down, once it goes through the liver, it's actually broken down into something called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is poison. Alessi, if you just type that in, it'll probably come up with weed killer, like for the gardens. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure it will. Just type in acetaldehyde, don't ask me how to spell it, but it comes, becomes poison and that's what deteriorates the brain. Yeah, acetaldehyde is a colorless flammable liquid with a pungent fruity odor. <laughs> if you go to what does acetaldehyde do in the body, yeah. Acetaldehyde is highly reactive and toxic. Acetaldehyde causes damage at the cellular and genomic levels. Acetaldehyde is, impl is implicated in the development of many diseases, including those caused by alcohol, AD, and stroke. Yeah. Alzheimer's disease and stroke. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you are you are putting yourself into this toxic stew by drinking tons of alcohol. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.